Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Beyond the 3D. I really do appreciate your listenership and your sharing of this podcast uh, amongst people that you know that could benefit from the information that I convey to you. Today, this is episode number 108, and there's a unfolding situation in the world. Uh, it's called uh, COVID-19, otherwise known as the coronavirus, generally speaking. COVID-19 happens to be the, the strain, and it emanated from Wuhan, China, as you know. And unless you've had your, unless you've been on another planet somewhere, you, I don't think there's any way that you could not know that this uh, virus is spreading around the world at, at such a rapid pace. And what makes it so interesting versus, it's not that, it's not that it's killing more people, impacting or killing more people than uh, drunk driving or uh, the flu uh, or any other situation that happens to uh, you know smoking, uh, alcoholism, whatever. It, there, are, there are thousands, if not millions of people that die every year from things. What makes this, this coronavirus, COVID-19, so, uh, I guess for some people, in, impactful on their psyche is... It's uncertainty. There's a uh, there's a how and a why that has that have big question marks behind them, uh, and there are people who are working on this night and day, and those are the people who have the knowledge and whose job it is to work on it night and day. Our jobs as human beings is to go about our lives, uh, being productive, productive, following our uh, goals, dreams, and intentions, uh, and keeping the happiness energy and enthusiasm flowing in our lives and fulfillment flowing in our lives because these things are always going to be out there. There's, there's always going to be different layers of events happening in the world, multiple events, and some of them are going to be quote-unquote serious, and they're going to impact people, likely not you. And we live in a news cycle that's 24-7, so we have to remember this, that information uh, anywhere in the world can be in your lap in seconds, in real time. That's the world we live in today. And that doesn't take the news. That's the, that's the internet. Now, there's a lot of information being spread amongst the internet, around the internet, that is fake. And uh, the whole idea behind Beyond the 3D podcast is to help you, assist you, with being the alchemist that you were born to be, the sovereign that you were born to be. And sovereignty dictates that you maintain control, uh, that you take ownership of and responsibility for your mind, body, and spirit. And so let's just break that down a second with regard to this or any crisis situation that's unfolding uh, in your backyard or around the world or happening to you directly. Uh, mind, body, and spirit, what does that really mean? Mind, that's what goes into your mind, what comes out of your mind, what bounces around in your head. That's what you have responsibility for. So in this day and age of, of endless, endless information, you want to make sure that you're the curator of what goes into your head. You're the curator, not somebody else. Thought viruses are everywhere. And when a, a situation like this COVID-19 coronavirus is out there, there are going to be many thought viruses that are going to uh, propagate on the internet. And you have to be very careful and, uh, about what it is that you allow into your mind, what you accept as a, as a thought. Negative thoughts, thought viruses are negative thoughts that you adopt as your own. That's what they are. And they are literally, prev they prevail in these situations because uh, you have trusted news sources and things show up, show up on those trusted news sources that haven't been vetted. There are also um, many YouTubers out there uh, in the world that are just making stuff up. Be very careful. Curate what goes into your mind, okay? Uh, as a suggestion, uh, someone said this morning, I thought this was awesome. In a situation like this with regard to this uh, COVID-19, uh, go to your local government, health officials, and 
look at your uh, government health agency in the United States. That is the CDC. It's the, it's the World Health Organization is the world's uh, health organization. And they're on top of it. They're on top of it. Get your information about where the virus is and what's happening and what's unfolding from a trusted source. And generally that means somebody who's non-political, somebody who has nothing to gain uh, by uh, telling you something really, really good. Get the facts from the right people, okay? That's how you curate what goes into your mind. Make up your own decisions, okay? Curate what goes into your mind, make up your own decisions. Now, when it comes to your body, wow, being a sovereign means means that you have control and you must maintain control and responsibility of your body. So you've got to ask yourself a question. If If I got the coronavirus, how strong would my immune system be? Have I been diligently working with regard to my eating habits, uh, my exercise habits, fitness habits, my supplementation habits? Have I been, have I had a focus on making sure that my immune system is strong? Is it? It's interesting how uh, what we eat, uh, the stresses we put ourselves under on a daily basis, what we think, our self-talk, all of these things are also uh, impacting your immune system, all of those. And it's not just what you eat. It's what you think about yourself and what you're capable of and how you process uncontrollable events because the, the definition of stress is the manifestation, the physical manifestation of trying to control what it is you cannot control. You go out and you get stressed out by traffic. You get stressed out by crowds of people, lines. You have queues you have to you know uh, line up in. And uh, other things of that nature, I mean, stress is stress. You know it. You feel it in your solar plexus, in your gut. All of that impacts your immune system, all of it. So happiness is a positive impact on your immune system, positively boosts your immune system, happiness, joy, enthusiasm. And inner alchemy is about maintaining the flow of, of joy, happiness, and enthusiasm. So it's not just the the simple things the 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 mechanistic things that you can do of eating the right foods taking the right supplements and that sort of thing it's how you're processing life events and that's what inner alchemy is all about it's what zero adversity is all about processing uh, events in a positive way versus a negative way responding positively because when it comes to your immune system it's not what happens it's how you process how you respond to what happens in your life that determines the uh, that is a, a determining factor in how uh, strong your immune system is. So, but you got to ask yourself that question. You can do the mechanistic things, and you make sure that you you do that. Uh, how, and you have to ask yourself that question: If this thing comes my way, if I'm exposed to this thing in one way or another, uh, how strong would I be? And start making some changes right now in your life to boost boost your immune system, um, soul, spirit. Okay, spirit. Let's look. Let's jump on that. Um, Spirit, you are a, uh, a spirit in human form. And uh, what you think um, in terms of what you, uh, what your, your, how much faith you have in yourself and what you're doing means something, okay? So, sovereignty. When you own your sovereignty, when you take control of uh, and, and manage your uh, mind, body, and spirit, you, as an extension, gain control over your thoughts, words, feelings, and actions. And that's where uh, we're going to, the process of inner alchemy is incredibly important because you're transforming all of these things. You're actively in real time when you're applying inner alchemy. And there are 16 elements. If you've been listening to these episodes, you know there are 16 different elements of inner alchemy. And I've identified 10 different elements that we can mix in a little little alchemic uh, mixing bowl uh, here to deal with uh, this uh, unfolding, uh, I want to, you know, I, I don't like to use the word crisis because that is a perception. It's an unfolding health scenario. That's what it is. It's an unfolding health scenario. Um, not all negative to, to everyone. People do survive uh, these, these things. It's, it's uh, I think, 2% of the people right about now uh, who, are, who have compromised immune systems are uh, experiencing uh, are, are, are dying from it. And let me just use this as an example. It's really interesting because somebody said, oh, wow, the doctor who, um, I don't know if you know this, but the, the doctor who 
exposed this virus in China, who blew the whistle on this thing, was an ophthalmologist. <laughs> he was an eye doctor. And an eye doctor wouldn't be someone who would ordinarily protect themselves from any kind of viral situation. You're looking at the eyes, but you are pretty close, right? Um, and in my view, and this is strictly conjecture, how would this, this man have passed on if he had actually, uh, if he had a strong immune system to begin with? Well, believe it or not, working diligently for hours and hours and hours, 16, 18 hours a day when you're in, in, in the, the trenches of attempting to uh, find out everything you can about something. And this is a man that was, who was likely very, very dedicated to what he was doing uh, and uh, to others, dedicated to others, to helping others live their best life. Uh, and he should obviously be commended for that. He, if, you, if you turn around and you start losing sleep uh, because you're working, working, and your mind is going, uh, you're going to compromise your immune system. And if he was infected and he did not take care of himself with proper sleep, proper nutrition, uh, his immune system was going to become compromised and this COVID-19 would eventually um, take hold and take over. So perception is the first element of alchemy that we're going to throw into our little alchemic bowl. I want you to just imagine that you've got a little bowl, a big bowl in front of you. Uh, if you close your eyes, you'd envision a big bowl, and we're going to throw this in there, throw the, uh, the element of perception in, because we're looking to transform the way we feel uh, continually here, because you're, this is a continuous process, a real-time process, mainly because you're always being exposed to the next big thing, the next breaking thing. Um, it, it, last week it was... Uh, Oh my gosh, uh, it was in Italy, Italy. Uh, two people, two travelers from Wuhan, two Chinese tra uh, tourists came to um, in northern Italy, north, I think it was north, uh, western, eastern Italy, and uh, exposed some people. And it went from 50 people to 200 people to 600 people uh, very, very quickly in this area and had to quarantine off three villages completely in Italy to, keep, to contain this thing. The latest thing this week is here in the United States, uh, there was the first known case in just outside of Sacramento, California, in Davis, the city of Davis. It's about 20 minutes outside of downtown Sacramento. Davis University Medical Center, a woman had come in, and uh, they, uh, she was suffering from uh, the, uh, the symptoms of, of the, of the COVID-19. However, because she had not been to China, they didn't put two and two together, and they didn't uh, CDC did not allow uh, the, the testing, did not provide the testing kit uh, because she didn't meet their initial criteria of have you traveled to Asia? Have you traveled to China in any way? And it turns out that this woman had uh, this uh, virus and she had not had any contact with anybody. Well, in California now, there are three cases now of a situation where someone who has, has contracted this COVID-19. So that's the latest news. So every day there's going to be uh, a few things that are going to be unfolding because that's what the news likes to do. They like to keep you engaged by saying, hey, this is breaking news. Hey, this is this, you know, and they'll break into whatever their regular programming is to tell you this thing because they want you to, 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 to stand by for more information. Point is that you have to continually be on top of your um, transformational process as, as new information evolves. And perception is where you start. Um, actually, no. First place you start is focus on what you can control. That is your thoughts, your words, your feelings, and your responses. That's the first place you begin. You always have to remember that. What can I control about this thing? What? It's somebody else's job to deal with the how and the why. That's not your job. And standing around lamenting about it, putting it out on social media, all that is just wasted time and energy, wasted emotional capital. Really? If you're not affected personally, this is an indirect experience. It's happening somewhere else in the world, somewhere else in the country to someone, and the news is bringing it to you and making it personal. You have to resist becoming personally involved with indirect experiences. You really do. Yes, empathy, compassion, yes, you want to express those. Love, unconditional love for others. Absolutely. And you can do that without becoming personally involved. You can just simply express those, those feelings. And emotions. You can do that. And you should. You should express gratitude for being alive and being healthy and not, not having been exposed 
uh, to uh, this particular virus or any virus for that, for that matter. Perhaps you haven't, haven't had the, cold, the uh, flu this year, but you know somebody who has. Perception is a big thing. That's, that's, that's the main element right now. After focusing on what you can't control, which is the thing you should always do, whenever something happens, ask yourself, what can I control about this? And then always gravitate towards what you can control. Uh, your perceptions of it. And that's where you jump into these, to the whole process of inner alchemy. So let's just run through this because I don't want to belabor this and make it more complicated than it really is. We've got a bowl in front of us. Perception, perception. Throw that into the bowl. What is your perception of this event? Is it is the perception dictated by what the information is that you've received? Somebody's called it a virus, uh, called it, excuse me, a, uh, a crisis. Someone's called it a pandemic uh, of, of, of wild proportions um, because it's moving around so quickly and nobody can, uh, it, it can get, their, their, um, uh, get their hands, their arms wrapped around it. They don't know the how, they don't know the why. And so that just becomes so prevalent. Your perception about this is if you're feeling fearful, worried, frustrated for yourself and your family, uh, your friends, if you're angry at all or you blame uh, the Chinese, for this virus having gotten out of their country, uh, if you're feeling uh, hopeless in any way, uh, in despair, if you're feeling guilty that you maybe did or didn't do something uh, that you should have done, uh, if you're resentful, these feelings indicate that you are harboring negative perceptions, <laughs> negative perceptions about this particular indirect experience. If it's happened to you, even if it's happened to you, even if you, you know, if you get the, f- the basic flu, this year's strain, I think it's the 13th generation, or at least there are 13 strains running around, I think, I believe I heard. Um, if you get the flu, you have to take responsibility for yourself. Your po- perception has to be positive that you're going to be moving forward, that this is just, you know, it's just something that happens. And you do what you can to sequester yourself so that you don't infect others and you take care of yourself. You drink plenty of fluids, you stay hydrated, you eat properly, um, get plenty of rest. You take control, okay, of your situation. Um, perception. You have to have a positive perception. What is a positive perception of, of the COVID-19 virus, coronavirus? What does a positive perception look like? Um, in essence, that... This is something that is happening. It's a neutral perception. It's an event. It's a circumstance. It's a scenario that's unfolding. That means when it's a neutral perception, it's just something that's going on. Right now, it's something you're just watching on TV or listening to on the news. That alone, that distance, makes it a lot easier to adopt a neutral to positive perception. A lot easier because it's an indirect experience. It's not happening to you directly, okay? So, first thing, examine your perception. And why is this important? Because all of your thoughts, words, feelings, and responses really flow from your initial perception. As I just stated, it, it, you wouldn't be fearful if you didn't have a negative perception. You wouldn't feel hopeless or anger, angry or frustrated or even worried or blame the Chinese for this sort of situation or circumstance without having a negative perception. Number two, receptivity. You got to control, as I said, what goes into your head. You've got to curate that. And receptivity is your level of receptivity to the information that's being presented. So in our bowl now, we have perception, making sure that we're harboring a, a, a neutral to positive perception. And if your perception is negative, you have to transform it right away. Examine why you have it and transform it to a neutral or positive perception. Your receptivity is important because what you're doing is you're going to be constantly receiving information. And what you have to determine is how you're going to be receptive to that information, what level of receptivity you're going to have to what is occurring, what is happening. Okay, the media sources, you've got to curate, uh, specifically curate your media resources. And I think earlier I just mentioned that the CDC and your local government uh, health, um, and World Health Organization as well, you can go to their websites and you can get information that's... Uh, that's unfiltered, that is uh, the, the straight scoop that's not been uh, twisted in any way to become entertainment, uh, in, in, uh, which is what the media does. They take information and they find the absolute worst in it, and that's what they want to present to you. Okay, so contrast. 
this is an interesting one. So in our bowl, we got perception, we got receptivity. Let's throw contrast in there real quick. Let's start thinking about this. Um, contrast is, have you ever experienced this before? Um, well, technically, the world has experienced this before. There has been SARS, H1N1, and Ebola. Uh, those three things have occurred, and they've all been handled and dealt with and haven't broken out into the huge pandemic that uh, they were professed as possibly becoming. Uh, kind of contrast, you personally, uh, since you've thrown contrast in your bowl, have you personally experienced this? Have you or your children or your husband or your, your significant other, have you in, in, in experienced the flu? You have, and you've done certain things. You've made sure that that the, the other family member was, was quarantined so that the other members couldn't get sick. And you've taken care of them. You've helped them out, helped them move forward. You have experience with this, past experience. Everybody does. Everybody's known somebody, and, you, and even yourself, who's been sick with the flu. Um, self-talk. Let's throw that into the bowl. Let's mix in that with receptivity and contrast and perception. Your inner conversation is paramount. Words matter. What you think about yourself and what you're capable of matters. Now, we're still looking at an indirect, an indirect experience here. So why would you uh, say things like, I hope I don't get that? Of course not. We, we, we know you, don't, you, you hope that. Why would you say it? I'm a, I'm a very healthy individual with a very strong immune system. That's stating who you are here in the present moment. By the way, I do not use language like I am sick or I'm getting sick. Don't do it. The mind programs the body. Self-talk is programming for you. And this is only about you, and it's not about somebody else. It's about you and what you're doing, what you're capable of. So your inner conversation has to be positive with regard to this. Positive. I can overcome this. I can deal with this. I have a strong immune system. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I stay healthy. And for you, you want to influence or encourage those around you to do the same thing, although you cannot control ultimately what they do. You can't do that. It's not possible. I don't like to use the word can't, but you, you're not going to control somebody else. They are, are going to do their thing based on their perceptions. That's what they're going to do. So self-talk, make sure yours is positive. Uh, in all cases, make sure you haven't adopted thought viruses like this is the end of the world and uh, um, and that this is uh, this is going to spread everywhere and it's it's only a matter of time before it gets to your city, gets to our city, gets to my home, gets to my street. Uh, that is those kinds of thought viruses are in a you know in effect um, so unhelpful, <laughs> so unhelpful for moving forward, for maintaining your happiness and your level of energy and enthusiasm for what you do in life. Personal responsibility, big one here. Uh, owning your sovereignty and controlling your self-talks, feelings, responses, and actions. That's what personal responsibility is. Be responsible for where you are, what you do, where you go, and um, uh, who you expose yourself to. And I believe, this is interesting, i got to tell you this, because my mother lives in Sacramento, and uh, she's in her ninth, uh, in her tenth decade of life right now. And she... Although has, oh, she has a very, she's a very high level of energy and a strong immune system, it, she, at that age, you, it is possible that uh, something like this could take hold if she was exposed to it, and it would be up to her, of course, to, uh, to maintain a positive outlook and to continue to uh, take actions perceive it in a positive way and and uh, make sure her inner conversation was positive. It's up to her. and we can. I encourage her, uh, and she is a very strong-willed woman. And uh, she lives in Sacramento, which is, well, she lives probably about 50 minutes from where, uh, 50, 60 minutes from where uh, the uh, outbreak uh, of this woman at uh, the Davis Medical Center had contracted uh, COVID-19 and, you know, I think about that. I, I do. I think about her being that close. And uh, my, uh, what I will tell her is she's right now in convalescing uh, in therapy. She had had a fall. And uh, what I'm going to tell her when she gets out is to make sure that she uh, takes care of, continues to keep her immune system strong, keep a positive attitude, uh, stay away from stressful situations, um, make sure that she is uh, sequestering yourself away from large crowds. 
and you know you do want to take every action you can to make sure that you're limiting the possibility of even just getting the flu. Forget about COVID-19, just the basic flu. Uh, people do go uh, to places, they do inhabit places that are, when they are uh, in a um, state where they can, uh, where you can contract, where they can, I uh, forgot the word right about now, but where you can contract uh, what they've got. That is possible. All right, so personal responsibility, that's in your bowl, okay? All this is should be helping to shape the way you feel to to create these are these are tools you can use to to continually shape and maintain your happiness and your energy and enthusiasm for what you're doing. Non-judgment is a good one to throw in the bowl as well because you certainly don't want to judge yourself and you don't want to judge others. Um, this is just something that's that's happening. It's it's something we have to deal with, and so we have to use a pragmatic approach to uh, to dealing with it. Zero adversity which I pretty much is, have made an element itself, uh, the three steps of zero adversity in the book that I wrote, perceive, respond, let go. Eventually, you're going to have to let go of the situation because it's going to uh, diminish in its uh, importance to the media, uh, and uh, they will fail to cover it. Uh, it will become, uh, as, as some viruses do, the flu and others, that they go dormant uh, in warmer weather. And... Uh, so eventually it's going to move off the world stage. Yeah, even though the, it might be there and the other people are being affected, those are continually in their indirect experiences, it is something that's going to occur uh, eventually, and you'll have to let it go and your experience of it go. Hopefully that experience was, was positive. Um, so compassion, empathy, uh, and, and gratitude are the, the final three elements that I, I encourage you to throw into your bowl. Uh, empathy and compassion for those people who have been affected, those people who have passed on uh, as a result of contracting uh, this particular COVID-19 uh, and, and any particular virus, the flu or otherwise. I used to, uh, actually I, I do frequent a, a small local grocery store. And when, I believe it was uh, SARS, uh, during the outbreak of SARS, there was a 42-year-old woman who worked in the vegetable department, stocking vegetables, made sure that it was uh, looking awesome and, and well-stocked. And she was a nice young lady, but I had uh, spoken to her on occasion, being very um, casually uh, positive uh, with her and acknowledging how great everything looked. And this is one of those examples that I, um, that I, share, I want to share with you because it's, it's important. You never know how long someone's going to be uh, on this planet, be a part of this world. This young lady, the next time I had gone in there, I think it was about a couple of weeks later, uh, I had asked where she was, and uh, the uh, the young lady at front at the, uh, at the checkout had said, well, she got sick with that flu, and it became very bad. She had to go in the hospital, and she, and she died. And I said, what? <laughs> she died. Yeah, and what's interesting is about this, about what I take from any death of someone who I'd been acquainted with. It's, it's, it's the reason, what I take from it is moving forward, the people who are here still with us alive. You have to be very cognizant of your connections with people, the relational connections that you have. People that you don't know, that you connect with, that you bump into, that you say hi to. They're people too, just like you. They have feelings like you. Yeah, they should be owning their sovereignty and their power, no doubt about it. However, what I always remember is that you never know how long someone that you meet is going to be on this planet, be in this world, be on this earthly plane, however you want to refer to it. And I'm always cognizant of how I treat them how I engage with them and make sure that my engagement with them is positive, encouraging, very positive encouraging. People at, the, at, at their heart innately, we love, we all love acknowledgement. If someone's doing a good job, let them know. Don't focus on the negative aspect of what might be happening. If you need to make them aware of something, do it in a, a loving, kind, and compassionate way. 
let them know, hey, you know, uh, this is a, is it possible that you might be able to do this or that? Yeah, sure. Okay. With some acknowledgement ahead of that, hey, you're doing a wonderful job. I just wanted to let you know that this over here was like this. And, you know, you may not want it to be that way. Yeah. There's no reason to slap people around or be negative towards people, to make people feel bad just so that you feel good. There's no need for that. You should feel awesome all on your own, okay? Gratitude, be grateful for who you are. Be grateful for the life you live, that you're here to enjoy, all the experiences that are thrown before you, and all the scenarios, all the circumstances. Be grateful for the adverse experiences that you have, the challenges that are, that are put forth uh, for you to, uh, to overcome, to conquer. Be grateful for all of it. Because all of it makes you who you are. All of it makes you who you are. So let's just recap these elements real quick. In your bowl was perception and receptivity, contrast, as it happened before, self-talk. Make sure your conversation is positive. Um, your personal responsibility. Take responsibility for yourself, your sovereignty, your mind, body, and spirit. Make sure that your immune system is, is strong, that, you're, uh, that you are um, constantly making moves that... Uh, that actually promote a strong and healthy immune system by eliminating stress in your life, those things. And stress is an experience, as I said. Don't control things that have no, you have no ability to control. That main thing. If you stop doing that, you'll feel a whole lot better, uh, almost in a heartbeat. Uh, zero adversity. Be careful of how you're responding. Are you uh, responding positively to events? That is... Are you letting go of the things you can't control? And are you taking action on the things you can control, right? Practicing a, a positive response to this uh, corona, uh, COVID-19 virus strain is to make sure that you are enhancing your immune system, that you're uh, making moves that actually make you uh, a stronger person. If this sort of thing comes your way, that you'll be able to deal with it. And a lot of that, as I said, is your mind. It's in your head. Mind programs the body. Compassion, empathy, and gratitude. Okay? Be kind. Be empathetic towards others and yourself. And be grateful for those around you. This is Michael Russ. I hope this has been a, a sort of a working um, example of how to deal with this COVID. But you can apply it to anything. Absolutely anything that happens. Any scenario. Just in this day and age... Be very cognizant about curating what you go into your, what goes into your head, what you allow. Even from those people, by the way, who you most respect, most respect your best friends, your parents, uh, your, your workmates that you look up to. Be very, very cognizant of what you're allowing uh, to go what of of what they say or what they do to go into your mind to disrupt the happy, energetic, and uh, overall positive and enthusiastic feelings that you have for yourself and the life that you're living. Take care. Until next time, I uh, wish you an absolutely awesome life. Be well and continue to make it a great year. Bye-bye.